Welcome to the last of the Call High Wildcats 1982 podcast, brought to you by Deets on Man Productions. And, um, you know, you go to college and you're on this all-star team. And so I would tell myself that, that really don't listen to that voice inside your head that tells you you're not good enough. And probably the other thing I would tell myself is get more sleep. Not everyone's going to like you, but try to make them want to. Still working on that one. <laughs> People say, oh, I'm not going to have kids yet because it's not the right time. Or I'm not going to get married yet because it's not the right time. Well, if you keep moving the goalposts in life, it's never going to be the right time. So enjoy your life. Do what you love for a little Figure out a way to make that work. Uh, don't, uh, don't do something because it's what you're supposed to do or because it's going to be the most fun. Do something that uh, makes you happy. Safe uh, going to Landers for lunch. Um, sitting around Jeff Lair's Mustang too, and listening to his tape of Creek Walk. I don't know. Hey, this is Scott Townsend. Welcome back to the last of the Call High Wildcats 1982 podcast. And today I'm with royalty, uh, high, Call High Day royalty, the queen, Pam Peterson Armour. Pam, how's it going? It's great. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing great. Yeah, just uh, I'm, I'm glad we uh, were able to finally get the uh, schedules worked out where we could do this interview. That's awesome. Yes, I'm off school from for Christmas break. So it's great time for me. So uh, what'd you have for breakfast this morning? We'll start off with the softball question. What did I have for breakfast? I had, well, I always make my husband biscuits and gravy on Sunday. So on Monday, I usually have a leftover biscuit. So that's ah. what I had. All right. And uh, so where, where are you calling from? Where, where, where in the world are you? I am back where I started from. I'm in Wichita, Kansas. I was born here and came back here when I was about 40. So Wichita, oh. Kansas is where I am. Oh, I didn't know you were from Wichita. Well, I was born in Wichita and moved to Bartlesville when I was about four. So. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Um, so, you know, just, uh, it's Pam, Peter, everybody knows you. Um, what, but uh, you know, we haven't, you and I haven't, at least haven't spoken in the last 39 years. So what do you, what have you been up to? What's, uh, give us the, sum it all up for us. What, what's, what's been going on? Uh, okay. Let's see. I went to OU and I roomed with Lauren Rolfing and sweet mates were Lori List and Lisa Hutchins. So we had a really fun time. Um, after I graduated, I have an, a degree in elementary education with a minor in math and anybody who knows anything about my high school math would laugh at that but it's because I had to take so many classes in math because I was so bad at it. So I have a minor in math and um, that's kind of fun. Um, moved all around, ended up, I'm in Wichita, Kansas now. And I teach fourth grade math, which again is hilarious because, but to me, it's the greatest job in the world. So I have three kids, they're really fun. Um, Two, one of them is still in high school, Cameron. You'll see him on Facebook sometimes. I put a little basketball stuff with him. Mm. Um, Allie's in Dallas. She's a CPA with um, EY. And Austin just moved back from D.C. And he lives about a mile from us. And he's working um, in politics. So that's, oh, that's what cool. I'm doing. Wow. So, um, you know, so you went to OU after OU. Um, what did you, you said you got your... Uh, degree in education and you started right, right out teaching uh, right yes I moved, to da I moved to Dallas um, with one of my college friends and we um, taught in Dallas for three years then um, got married and moved to New Orleans and taught there for several years and oh, okay so yeah I've been teaching <laughs> off and on I stayed home with my kids and then when we moved to Wichita my goal was to always teach at a school where I could teach with my kids. And the school I teach at now starts with two-year-olds. So my son, who's 18, has been with me since he was two, which is so much fun. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. So, yeah. Well, I got some lightning round questions. We'll get some of these. Oh. Uh, these are just like yes or no questions. Just one okay. word answers, you know, just uh, just uh, 
your favorite teacher? High school had to senior. Be Mrs. Smith, because she Ms. was Smith. just awesome. Yes. Favorite class? Oh, gosh. I would say the class I was most proud of was Mr. Simmons' class, because to me, that was really hard. And um, I think he pulled out the best in me. So I would say that had to be Mr. Simmons' class. What well, car did you drive? You know, I didn't have my own car, so I drove my mom. My mom and I shared um, a Mustang, so I had a pretty cool car, but it was not mine. It was my mom's. So No, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, if we were to drop you off on a desert island and you had plenty of food and water, we got that out of the way, what's the one other thing you would want left with you? Okay, that's hard. Um, can it be a person? Uh, I guess so. I'd have to have somebody for, for company because I talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so, gosh. And it would probably be my son, Austin, because he's pretty, um, sorry to my husband, but my son, Austin, can figure out things pretty well. So I would say probably my son, Austin. Okay, there you go. All right. Well, uh, you know, I was looking through the yearbook and, you know, doing some research and studying up on what uh, you were doing in high school and so you know you it looks like you were in high y do you remember that yes i do and uh of course i said earlier you, you were the call high i'd like to, i'd like to camp out here for just a minute the call <laughs> high day queen was that so <clears throat> were you the homecoming queen or was it the just the call high day queen uh, it was the homecoming queen Okay. All right. So what was that like? I mean, what, uh, I just barely remember that. What was the whole process like? You know, it was very, um, I, I still can't believe it just, you know, especially cause I work at a school that has a high school now and that's a really huge thing every year. Oh yeah. It was really, um, really humbling. I would say. Um, you and Greg Brewer King, he was the King. You were the yeah, queen. Greg Brewer was the King. Um, which, you know, again, in itself, that's just, it was just, I was very shocked. I had no idea. And how did, how did you get voted in? I mean, was it a vote or was it a, well, I uh, think what, I think what they told me afterwards was that the whole senior class just nominated, just nominated whoever they wanted. And then they put it to the top three and it was Rhonda and Dana and I, so oh, okay. just, you know, they're just amazing people in itself. So yeah, it was, I was, you know, and then I guess the whole class voted. I, I, I don't really remember. Yeah, I, don't <laughs> I, yeah. I was just such I'm a long sure. time ago. Yeah, I know. But it was, uh, it was, such, it was a very big honor. I was, I was, you know, you know, I was, I was very proud. It was a very proud moment. So. Can you describe the picture of you and Matt Newman in the yearbook? <laughs> the one where he's like smacking me, kissing me and all that stuff. <laughs> Is that the one you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I mean, it's just, you know, Matt is just so fun and he makes you so comfortable that, you, and, and here's the thing that I remember is you don't ever know who's going to kiss you. I think it's the football captain of the day or the football captain of the week or something like that. So, so what was, really where were you? Was this at a football game or was, it was this? In the middle of the football field. So, yes. Okay, okay. And he gave, and gave me a nice big kiss, so. And we laugh about it, I think, every time we see each other, which was in college. We saw each other a lot. And it was our, I guess it's how we, you know, you know, remember each other. Relate to each other. Yeah, yeah, we relate to each other because we were both out in the middle of football field, you know. So I thought the king and the queen were together. I guess that's not well, the way it went. I think somebody else kissed the king. And I want to say it was Jennifer Williams, but I don't know why I think that. Well, I don't know why. I don't I don't remember why you would think the king and the queen would kiss, but no, nope, yeah. it's not that way. Yeah, okay. So I'll have to get with Greg. Next, when I interview Greg, that's one of the questions I'll have to yeah, ask. Yeah, please him. ask him because I would like to, it again, it's been a long time, so I don't really remember. So was that that was on a Friday night? Was that right? Is that right? Yes. And uh I don't think we won that football game that night. No, we I, didn't. Yeah. I do remember that because someone told me everybody wins their homecoming football game, and I said. We didn't, but we had great football players. So, you know. Yeah. Hmm. 
And you were also in the Rifle Corps. I was. And that was really fun. So was, what was that like? You know, it was really fun. We had, um, um, you know, Mary Kay and Kim and I that grew up together in Oak Park. And so we were all on it. And then um, it was just fun. It was just fun to be part of the band. I was always in the band, but I never in high school, never played an instrument because I was terrible because I probably didn't practice. <laughs> so I um, get my yearbook here. So I laugh at like I, I was laughing at someone talking about who was first chair and who was this. And I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, I honestly wasn't. I was in the band, but I was the office manager because I was so terrible and I was a <laughs> rifle twirler. So seriously, yeah, here's, here's a picture of you and uh, Richard Whitmire. He's uh, escorting you with the. I think that was junior year, maybe. Or was it senior year? This senior year. Yeah. Looks like it. Yeah. Oh, well, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think, I think he escorted me at the assembly. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what this looks like. Um, the other, there was, there was a rifle core picture. Oh, here it is. And you said, you said Mary. Mary Kay Rourke. Yeah, yeah, I don't. Includes Kay. I don't see her in this picture though. It's hmm. Hmm. K Hayes, K Smith, Pam Peterson, V Corley, Valerie Corley. Valerie, yeah. Uh, and S hey. Howard, but it doesn't have Mary in here. Huh. Who knows? Maybe, maybe. She might have missed that day's photo. She may have. Yeah. So anyway. But anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So what was life like growing up in Oak Park? I haven't talked to many Oak Park people. Um, you well, know, you was, know, you and I, we lived on the same block. You were, we did you and you and I and Don Hyken, he lived yeah. on the same block. Yeah. You know, I loved growing up there just because, you know, we walked to school and the school was right beside your house and the elementary um, school, right? The elementary yeah. school. And then we caught the bus by your house to go mm -hmm. to central. I remember mm -hmm. that. Anyway, I loved growing up in Oak Park. We just, you know, I went to church out there. So I kind of hung out with everybody, you know, and my sisters and brothers ages. And, you know, all my friends were out there at the time. And I, I, I have it. My parents, I was actually there on Saturday. My parents still live in the same house. Really? On Ramblewood. Yes, they do. Oh, my so, gosh. I know. It was, it was, it's fun to go back and just, you know, see huh. the old hood. Yeah. That, uh, of course, we had Oak Park Elementary across the street, and then of course College High was downtown. You know, Billy Robertson, David Groover, uh, uh, Sandra Yeager mentioned somebody the other day that uh, she went out with. I can't remember what that guy's name was. Lived on Forest. Yes, um, uh, Grady. Grady Wilson. Yeah, I, don't I, I yeah. think it. Yeah, David Near. Uh, Charles Benley. There were a lot of people actually. That there were a lot probably. of us out there. Carla yeah. Shepard lived out there for a while. Oh yeah. Uh huh. Billy Robertson. Yeah, Billy. Doug McGowan. Right. Oh, you're really pulling them out. <laughs> Kim Smith and Mary Kay were my friends out Mary there. Mary Kay. Yeah, Mary. Do you remember the party Mary had uh, at our house? Oh yes. Uh, was that a what was that? What? I think it was Senior Skip Day, wasn't it? Mm, one maybe. Yeah. And they had the new pool and stuff. And I remember her dad coming home and I probably don't know if I should say this was in his underwear in the garage and her dad popped it. <laughs> the, the, and luckily her dad was cool, but it was, it was, I do remember that. <laughs> Mary Kay and I got in a lot of, a lot of, we had a lot of shenanigans together. So. Oh, did you? Yeah. That's cool. We did. So 
that goes to my next question. So who were who were your running buddies in high school? Mary Kay and Mary Kay and, and I have always been really close. Um, still are. I ran with Margaret Tinkle. We we probably did a few things. We may have had a party at her house or so. Um, Lauren <laughs> Rolfing and I and Jennifer Williams hung together. And then I hung with a lot of people from the class below us, Gretchen Gallery and Lynn Ball, oh, yeah. and Linda Yelkin, Susie Riddlebarger, Maggie Moore. Mm-hmm. We went skiing together every year, that group, the younger kids. So I, I kind of, I was thinking about this because I know you always ask this question. And, you know, I think I was just friends with a lot of people, you know, didn't probably have the, you know, besties that hung out, just the two of us. I think I just hung out with a lot of, a lot of groups. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Do you still, do you still stay in touch? Huh? Do you still stay in touch? Um, I still stay in touch. Margaret Tinkle and I went to college together. We're in the same sorority, and I still see her. Um, Mary Kay and I, um, we still stay, we stay in touch. Um, you know, Lauren and Jennifer are gone, so that makes me sad. I still, you know, so. Where that's yeah, concerned. She died of cancer. Oh, okay. Hmm. And it was pretty sudden. You know, oh, okay. she just kind of, she was just sick and gone pretty quick so wow okay so that okay all right so i know jennifer lauren uh jennifer williams she married scott mckissick yes and she lived right down the street i mean i can see her house from here just uh when she came back to bartlesville or something she was an anesthesiologist or an anesthetist or something so anyway yeah okay well wow lauren rolfing didn't know that okay so we'll start i'll start back up here um I would like to have Margaret Tinkle on. I would like to have Mary Kay on. I think that'd oh, be. Please do. Yeah, I'd love to <laughs> love to hear their stories. Speaking of stories, that's so. Dory, what are some of the other funny memories you have uh, with, uh, with with the crew? Oh, that you, have, that you can tell. Well, one time uh, Margaret Tinkle had a party, and it was it. Her parents were out of town, and it ended up being a pretty big party with lots of people. And I had just had my tonsils out at 16. So, you know, there was probably alcohol. Sorry, Margaret, if I'm telling stories, but (laughs) so I remember I needed to go, I needed popsicles because I just had my tonsils out. So Tyson Phil took Margaret's car and took me to get popsicles, but he might've gone a little too fast through, I think Woodland Park and hit something and when we drove her car back it had the most horrific sound (laughs) and so we had to go to wherever she took her car and try to get that fixed the next day and then I'm not sure if it's the same party or another party again it was with Margaret and someone punched a hole in her parents wall so we thought we could just move the picture on the wall over (laughs) like you know three feet and they wouldn't notice (laughs) so you know and then her we were her that probably didn't work. Really, it didn't work real well. So I was spending the night. We were laying up in, up in her bed, and it was like three in the morning. And we hear this. Her parents had a fancy car, like something that made a lot of. You could definitely tell it was. I don't know. It was like I can't even think of a really fancy car, but it was a really nice car. And we're laying in bed, and she goes, "I hear my parents coming," and we hadn't vacuumed the floor because we'd move this. We tried to fix the wall, and that didn't work because we had no clue what we we're doing. Yeah. So we had all this. Um, Oh, wall plaster on the floor trying to fix it. And, and her parents show up at like three in the morning. And you know, they knew exactly what we had done. You, you <laughs> know, they did, but they were really cool about it. And I don't think, I don't think she got in trouble. But anyway, those are two of the things I remember. So Margaret and I must have gotten in a little trouble sometimes. Yeah. It's, uh, those parties always seem to get out of hand pretty quick, you know. And uh, I know. High school prom. Yes. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, I went, I was, I've decided I must be kind of like, OU. you know, they had um, Bud, Barry, Bob, and now Brent. And I went with Brad, Brian, and then your brother, Ben. Did you remember that? Yep. Yeah. So I had, I had the three B's as well. <laughs> so I'm kind of like, OU. I guess I like the B's. Yeah. Uh, he's, yeah, he's a bonehead. No, I'm just kidding. I'm, that, that, that's that's me being a typical brother. 
Well, again, I was hanging out with the, the grade below me at that point, and I was dating Brian O'Toole, who was in college. So I, we just wanted to have fun. So I ended up going with Ben, and we had hanging out with all the Gretchen and Lynn and Linda and Susie and that whole group from the class below us. So hmm. that, that was probably my most fun prom because, you know, I was a senior and there was really nothing to, you know, it was just, I, I considered I was going with, you know, my friend Ben. So it wasn't like there was any pressure to, you know, do the prom things, if right. that makes any sense. I know we all went out to my aunt's house before for a picture. Some I remember pictures, that. All that stuff. And so that was really cool. What uh, what was your biggest concern in high school? Um, yeah. I think my biggest concern was probably not being enough, whether it was not being academic enough, not being um, nice enough or, you know, kind enough. My mom always instilled, you have to be kinder than necessary. And so I always, I look back and hope I was all those things. Hope I was, hope I was enough. And so uh, what do you think that stems from? You know, did you ever become enough? Oh, I'm, I am enough. And that's what I think as you become an adult, you just become who you're supposed to be. And that's why I think I've loved watching all of these, these videos that you, or these podcasts that you've done, because I look at these people that I held in such high esteem and, and, they're all enough and they're all just the coolest people. So, you know, I look at Amy Wallen and she makes her pies all of November and she donates the money. And I think that's just the coolest thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I look at Chris Hayes who still swims all the time and, you know, uh, Robin Perry still swims all the time. I see her on Facebook. It's just really fun for me to see that we all are, we are all enough and we're all more than enough. We're just, we've just become these amazing people. Mm -hmm. And you I know, wish, I, you know, no, go ahead. I was to say, I wish, I wish I knew all everybody as well as I feel like I know them now, just from social media. That mm -hmm. to me is, that's been the best part of social media is getting to see everybody and, oh, they have grandkids or I had no idea. So I watched your um, podcast that Chris service had a young one. I knew, I knew Kent had two little ones. Mm -hmm. but I had my, I had my youngest when I was 38 and I thought I was just ancient. I felt like it's grandmother. <laughs> so to have people that have kids younger than me, I'm like, yes, that makes me so happy for them because kids are fun. Right. You know, <clears throat> a while ago, I, I, uh, you know, the collective wisdom that we've had on this show, I think there's been about 30 people so far on So you take 30, 30 people times, uh, 39 years, per person that's 1170 years of wisdom wow. that is represented you, you know up to you and so that's really cool all the people up to you um it, i almost wish we could take high school students and say you have to watch the series of videos and realize that you know it's like uh um mindy goodell said you know i needed to learn to get over myself you know there were so many things that we thought we knew and we didn't know Right. It has, it's just been fun. It's been, I can't wait to watch all the ones you're doing right now. Cause you've got yeah. some, there's just everybody I see is like, Oh, that sounds fun. I can't mm -hmm. wait to hear about them. So it's, you're doing a great service for our class. So thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah. Matt Newman, you, Kurt Rovenstein, Keith Richards, um, oh, Kim Harrison just signed up. Um, and, and uh, some others are still pending. They just have to schedule it. But uh, yeah. Right. What song takes you back to 1982? Oh, my goodness. Well, I'm, I'm kind of a, I'm, I was kind of a country music nerd. So it would probably be something country. Oh, yeah. And then I'm going to really be nerdy. Um, my parents made me listen to the Statler Brothers all the time, all the time. <laughs> in the eight track player in the car. So yeah, that I'm laughing because everybody else is like some rock and roll. Mine's probably the Statler brothers, something of the Statler brothers or Willie Nelson or something like that. I was a, I was a, I still love country music, but I was a country music probably oh. nerd back then. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Statler brothers. Uh, they had that one song. Uh, 
Does she play tambourine? I think so. The yeah. song I remember was, it was called Elizabeth and I loved that song. And so my daughter's middle name is Elizabeth and my mom probably thinks it's from my great grandmother, but it's really from the Statler Brothers song. So <laughs> something new to learn right there. Yeah. A little inside baseball oh. there. Oh, there's... I've got a giant cat that's trying to help me have the interview. What's the cat's name? Well, that's, this one's Brooks. It was name is Westbrook after Russell Westbrook. And then now it's just Brooks. Yeah. Okay. So greatest accomplishment since 1982, oh, professional, greatest, personal, whatever. My greatest accomplishment would be raising three pretty phenomenal kids as a single mom. Um, my first husband left me when my youngest was one. Oh man. And, right. And it was something I never thought would happen. And I was totally blindsided, which I think that's how divorce happens. But um, I will thank him for giving me the finances to raise them. But I feel like I did most of the, the late nights and the school projects and the hockey practice and basketball practice and dance practice pretty much myself. So, you know, I worried that my kids would again, feel different or not enough or, and they are just amazing people. So that is my biggest accomplishment is raising three pretty stellar kids. By yourself? By myself. I, I married Clark, my current husband, when Cameron, he's now 18. He was eight. So he okay. helped me and he wanted to, he wanted to find someone who had little kids. So he, he's an amazing father figure to my kids and they they i'm not saying their dad is not he's 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 still in their lives but you know to have they have you know two men that just think they're pretty awesome so that's kind of cool thank you for listening to the last of the call high wildcats 1982 podcast and we'll be right back after this If you've enjoyed this podcast in 2021, you have my patrons to thank for that. A bunch of wildcats got together and created a GoFundMe account to help in the production of this podcast. So with that in mind, I've started a Patreon page so that listeners can help support the last of the Call High Wildcats 1982 podcast on a month-to-month -month basis. So please check out my Patreon page patreon.com forward slash wildcats 1982 and now back to the show yeah uh what's the situation where you didn't think you were going to make it through but you did probably really raising my kids. I just, you know, you know, when you have a one-year-old and you're by yourself and, you know, a, a nine-year-old and a five-year-old, you just, you just don't think you can do it. And, um, you know, my parents were amazing help. You know, my mom would come keep the kids or, if, you know, I, I went back to work at that point. And where were you at this time? We were in Wichita. Okay. We were here in Wichita. We moved here when um, Cameron was one, and shortly thereafter, I, I got I got left for a, for nothing better to say. Um, <laughs> you know, you, it, it it just is what it is. So, yeah. um, you know, and I I raised him by myself for about seven years, and then um, you know Clark came along, and he's been amazing. So, but we we made it through, and I think that there have been people that have been put in my life that have been in the same situation and you can say, you know what, it, it's terrible, but you will make it. And you can, you know, it, it just, you just have to, you know, help others. So yeah. I, I'm proud of that. I'm really proud that, you know, cause there was, I was bitter and angry for a long time and had to go to lots of counseling. That's not a bad thing, but um, no. ended up with, you know, two different counselors because one of them was my band aid and one of them was my get to the, get to the root of it. 
you know, get to the root of the cause. So, yeah, and it helped. And I think everybody needs to go through counseling. It's not a bad thing. It's just letting someone, you know, hear your feelings or hear. And I, I learned a lot about myself. Was it talk therapy about, or? Excuse me. Was it talk therapy or? It was, was talk it? therapy. And one of my therapists, I would walk in and just start crying because he just got to the root of the problem. He was like, why do you pick people like this? What do you think about yourself? <laughs> you know, da, 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 da. And I was like, I just walk in and start crying because he just, but he was so good. So good. So. Hmm. So I guess that is kind of a self-esteem uh, destroyer. That whole it is. kind of a thing. So how do you get over something like that? What do you tell people when they say, that maybe they're in the same situation where they've, how do you get through that? You know what? I just, I mean, I tell them what you just can't believe at the time, it's going to get better. You're going to, you're going to make it through this, whether you want to or not. Yeah. And just surround yourself with friends or with family or, you know, don't stay at home, get out and do stuff. You know, I, my one counselor would tell me, your job for this week is to go out and have coffee with your friends mm. or go to the movie or something. Mm -hmm. And she would give me a note card. And the next week she would say, what, well, did you go out and do this? And I would, you know, try to say yes. <laughs> I wouldn't lie to her, but sometimes you had better, you know, I had three little kids at home. So. Yeah. It's important. Yeah. I, I, I get that. I, uh, after having, after being laid off from ABB, there's been serious, bouts of depression and feeling like you know, you're not no one wants you you know and blah 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 right. all, all that all that stuff I've you been know there and it's really easy uh i agree with you it's really easy to just uh want to be by yourself and close yourself off and you know like in the studio here I, I could spend you know all week in here but it really helps to get out it does help to get out and have lunch with somebody or right you know just it uh, it really does help and but i don't have a i don't have a counselor i probably think i think i probably need one but uh, i think your counseling is talking to all of us because you're <laughs> <laughs> you're my counselor <laughs> we're all your counselors because you're 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 just see you're asking us the questions and then you're so you're helping us all out too oh okay cool well that's good to know yeah so i i totally get where you're coming from I think, I mean, I haven't <laughs> been through divorce, but I have been, you know, there, the tough times, you know, and there are some days when you don't think you can get through it, you know, and you just right. put one foot in front of the other and just run out the clock. Seems like. <laughs> I remember those days. <laughs> what? Just run uh, out the clock. <laughs> yeah. What would you tell your 18 year old self knowing what you know now? Um, when you see Pam Peterson walking off this graduation stage? I think I would tell myself to um, find a job you love because I absolutely love going to work every day with my fourth graders. They're funny. And so I would say, find a job you love and um, be who you're supposed to be. Whether it's, you know, I, I, like I said, I've just seen all these really cool people that graduated with us and they've just become these, they always were these great people, but mm -hmm. they've become even better versions of themselves. So I would say, just be who you want to be, you know, do what you want to do with your life. So that, that's what I would tell myself. And I feel like I've, I've now at how old am I? 57 have gotten there. So that's what I would say is just, you know, be who you're supposed to be. All right. It's yeah, it, it's so easy to want to be like somebody else, you know. You think, oh, I might be like that person, but right, that person's already taken, and uh, <laughs> you're, you're exactly right, they are taken. So just be the best you you can be. Yeah, I agree. I totally agree. Um, any parting words to the Wildcats listening, watching? Um, this is your this is your time, Pam. It's uh, wow. Um, this, I can't. This episode's I can't all about you. I would say I can't wait to see everybody at the reunion that's coming up. So I hope that all of these people, everybody, anybody, even if you haven't been interviewed yet, I hope everybody attends because I just, I just want to talk to people again. I mean, this, these, you know, these, these podcasts, I love the bottom of your cup that says hi. Did you know it says hi on the bottom of it? Okay. Yeah. No one's anyway. ever said anything about that, but you're the first one. 
Well, I, I was like, it says, I, well, I'm a teacher. And so I notice everything you have to, <laughs> yeah. especially with fourth graders. Yeah. Um, I forgot the question you just asked me. <laughs> what was I saying? Oh, uh, you, you were just talking about how you like the pod or something about. Uh, I love the podcast. the podcast and I really, I can't wait to see everybody at the reunion. I hope reunion, that everybody yeah. comes, even if it's just for part of it. And, you know, I can't wait to branch out and just talk to these really awesome people again. So to right. me, that's, that's an exciting thing to look forward to. What are you looking forward to in 2022? What, what do you hope this year's like as opposed to 2021? I am looking forward to my son, Cameron, graduating from high school. I'm looking forward to seeing where he's going to end up. His top choices are Baylor and Auburn, followed by KU, which I know you went to KU for a while. Yeah. So um, excited about that. Um, it'll be the first time that Clark and I have ever been alone. Mm. So once he moves to college, we'll have, we'll be alone for the first time, which we love to travel. So like he already has plans for the OU Nebraska game. We already have reservations for that. And so it'll be the first time we've ever been able to, you know, not have to worry about, do we need to be at a basketball game or football on Friday nights? And so I will miss having someone home, but I'm looking forward to that. Looking forward yeah. to having a little bit of time. So what are your hobbies? What do you do when you want to have fun? Speaking of fun, what do you, what's uh, you golf or you swim, you run, do you um, play chess or. I took do? up golf last year when, before we last Christmas, I said, I think I want to take up golf. So my husband went out and got me golf clubs and shoes and outfits and hats and, you know, <laughs> tees and balls and everything I could possibly need. So I'm terrible, but it's really fun. It's something he and I can do together. Um, we love to travel. We love to go to national parks. So we do a lot of hiking. Butch kind of scares oh, yeah. me now because he <laughs> kind of got lost. But right. I only hike on a trail like for three or four hours. I don't I don't plan on spending the night or anything like that. So. Right. So you go to national parks. We love national parks. Um, we got to go to Zion the first day they opened up after COVID which Zion is the most amazing place, but it's always so crowded. Mm. You have to take a bus in and you have to, you know, get reservations just to ride the shuttle. So we actually, my husband's a national park geek, totally. So we, um, he's like, let's go to Zion. So I was teaching remotely and I had like one day left to teach. So I said, well, I can teach the last day. They don't know where I am. Sorry if they're seeing this. <laughs> so we went out there and the first day it opened, he's like, we need to get in line at like 5 a.m. because it's going to be crowded. Well, nobody knew it was open. So we just, we just had the best time. So where is really Zion? Um, it's in Utah. Utah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So do you have a bucket list of visiting all the state you parks know, or? I, I just... My husband is a geography nerd, so he knows all about that stuff. And I just go along and get the benefit of his knowledge, which is really fun. So I would like probably, we've been to a lot. Um, we went to Yellowstone and the Grand Tetons this year. So I, I can't even think of which one I want to go to next. Maybe, um, I can't even think. And when I was talking to Lori List, she mentioned that you guys, or that you met up with her not too long ago, last I year or two it. years ago or something. Um, on spring break, we wanted to go someplace really kind of chill. And because of COVID, we couldn't go real far. So we went to Bernie, Texas. And I said, I think Lori List lives in Bernie, Texas. And so got on Facebook, looked it up, sure enough. So we went to um, Tapatio Springs, which is, I think George Strait built it or something. Mm -hmm. And we just wanted to go golf and our kids, um, Allie had just finished taking the CPA. So she just wanted to chill and Cameron had just finished basketball. So he just wanted to chill. So we went out there and um, called her and she came and met me and we had a six or seven hour breakfast. <laughs> it was so <laughs> fun to catch up with her. Oh, that's great. So that was really, really cool to, to end up and to see her. And, you know, it's like time had just stood still and she was my sweet mate again. We laughed and talked about our kids and you know what, what we've been doing for all this time it was really fun to see hmm. her if anybody wants to get in touch just like with Lori list if anybody wants to get in touch with you you know reach out and reconnect or you know how 
What's the best way to do that? Um, cell phone or email or Facebook Messenger or one of those. But um, my email is just my first initial P and then armor. No, you. It's like nine and shining armor, mm-hmm. not under armor. At and then WCSKS.com. It's my school. And then okay. WCSKS.com. So that's how to get a hold of me. I'll put it in the show notes down below. Um, Perfect. Yeah. Uh, so I'll put your email and your Facebook uh, link there too. Perfect. Um, well, it's been great catching up with you. I really appreciate you taking the time to visit with us. I know everybody's going to enjoy hearing from you and you'll probably be getting a lot of emails and Facebook comments and all that stuff and well-deserved. So thanks a lot. Well, thank you. It's been really fun. It's like I said, I've just enjoyed these so much and can't wait to hear from the the other people you're going to interview. So yeah. I just, when they come on, I'm, I get my, my AirPods on and sit in bed and like, don't bother me. I'm listening. <laughs> Leave me alone. And then my husband will walk in and say something like, I'm listening. Leave me alone. Well, that's cool. Thanks a lot once again. Thank you. (laughs) So for Pam Peterson Armour, this is Scott Townsend. Thanks for listening to the Last of the Call High Wildcats 1982 podcast. Have a great day, and we'll talk to you later. Last of the Call High Wildcats 1982 podcast is a Dietzo Man production. Visit the Last of the Call High Wildcats 1982 YouTube channel, listen on Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows.